Thank you, Bishop Huggins. Thank you, everybody. Uh, good morning to you from California State University, Channel Islands. And you know, you were talking about sensitivity, Bishop. I think you said it was Kappa, but I think it was really sensitive for you to wear our university colors today. <laughs> Red, and it even has a silver tie. These are our colors. I mean, very cool. He's a subtle man, but very, very nicely done. At the moment of personal privilege, could I ask all of my colleagues, the students, faculty, and staff from Cal State General Islands to stand and recognize all of you, please.
whole of that heritage and let's together take it into the future and create the future which has opportunity for all. One last thing. I'm going to ask something I haven't asked of you before, but Bishop Williams and I have talked about, and that is we're trying to reach out into the community, but we don't come saying we're from the government and we have all the answers. Rather, we have tried to reach out and say, what can we do? In this vein, then, what can we as your university do better to serve your community so that our children and our grandchildren will claim the future, will claim their heritage? If you have ideas, please let Bishop Huggins office know, let Dr. Sawyer know, call me. We're serious about this. And if we're not doing things in a way that are best attuned to the future for your kids and your grandkids, then we've got change. And the only way we can change is if you help us know. So once again, thank you for letting me be with you. Thank you for letting me come home to St. Paul's once again. It truly is an honor for me and a rare privilege that I never take for granted. And I hope to see you many, many times again. Thank you for letting me be with you this morning. Good morning, church. So first of all, I also want to thank um, our first lady, Tony Huggins. Thank you. And this is my brother. Good to see you again. And for all the Divine Nine and all the other organizations, thank you so much. Uh, it means a lot because it does take me to whole community. And I'm not going to speak in platitudes or cliches, but I do want to say a couple of things that I think are important. It's a little bit dark and gloomy outside, but then we have to think of what it looks like in New Jersey, New York, and Boston. Right? We leave the house today and we say, it's cold outside, and it's 59 degrees. And so we have to understand that we really do have it good. And, and driving along and coming in from City Valley to this beautiful community and, and taking in the flowers. You see the flowers that have come because of this kind of foggy, kind of misty day has helped to make those plants grow around our university about two years ago. It burned. But now it's beautiful, it's green, it's plentiful. And as you look around, you start seeing the beautiful flowers. And those flowers very much represent God's uniqueness of the people that He's put on the planet. If we were all one color, that would be one, but not the other color. But they all grow differently, they're different sizes, they're different colors, they're different shapes. And they all have a different reason for being in that moment. And so today is a day of celebrating a garden. We are here to celebrate the uniqueness, the color of the people, the color of the attitudes, the color of the ethics, and the color of the composure of each and every one of us that are in the audience today. Because you are part of God's children. And it doesn't matter. You see, God doesn't make mistakes. So when there's a certain ability that you have that's less than someone else's and more than someone else, and that was not by mistake. You were here for a reason. And the fact is, is that education, and one of the things that fulfills me is, is that I get to be around folks that are my CI family. I get to be around my St. Paul's family. Well, I got two of my families, and then I got Dr. Sawyer, my love family. And so I put all And so, I say to each and every one of you is that we do have an important charge. It's not just about even our children. It's not about my blood, my baby, my DNA. It's about each and every child that's out there that we should not leave them behind. I'm so proud when I walked up and I saw our nursing students out there and I saw some of our new students out there and folks from different parts of the academy and parts of our institution out there. I get to see our staff. And they're excited because this is an opportunity where we get to mix our worlds together to show that we are but one world and one race, the human race. Right. And 
So, as President Russia said, and, and I have to say, President Russia and I have been together going on 14 years. Um, it's really been an incredible relationship to have somebody that you actually enjoy working with and working for. Someone who has integrity, someone who has meaning, and someone who actually has a charge to come into an institution like Channel Island and including the relationship that we have with St. Paul is not just an act, it's the real McCoy. And it's nice you knowing when you hear a person deliver a message on a daily basis, so when they do it on Sunday, it's part of the continuation of the sixth and seventh day. And so many of us, we do it on Wednesday, we do it on Sunday, but the other day we party in that. We don't always keep our message consistent. And so with the church family, I'm so proud because like I said, I like looking around, I like seeing the garden. It's full, it's colorful, and it's part of the plan. And the plan simply is, is this. And so we have to, in 2020, make sure that 20% of our African American men, we should have degrees. 20% of us should be, in 2020, having our baccalaureate degrees. That needs to be the message. 20 in 2020. 20 in 2020. But you know, this is what happens where we are in prison. We are incarcerated. So that if we can get our young men between the ages of 18 and 24, we can get them to go to college, 20 in 2020 should be the message. You need to get them to go to school. I don't care where you go to school. I don't know you go to Jim Miles. But if you don't go to Jim Miles, I don't want you to go to school. Because it is so important for us to be able to thrive and stay alive in our community. And I will end this. And that is, that we've been hearing the message, hands up, don't shoot, I can't breathe. And what I'm going to tell you is this, hands up, hands out, and vote. You won't have to worry about breathing and worry about being shot if you are living with those people who are making the law. Get them out of shot. And we will live forever, thank you, sir. Amen goes right there. God bless you, Dr. Rush, Dr. Sonia. We appreciate you taking the time. Let's give another hand.